Hey golfers, welcome back to the next episode of Road to the PGA with Thomas Campbell. Today I'm joined by Larry Bobka and this has been a very, very highly anticipated video for me to focus on and this is related to putter fitting and improving my putting. Larry, uh, I've sent you a few text message over here the last few days and you're looking at stats from 2021 on the PGA Tour. One thing I noticed, you know, there's only one golfer on, out of all the players on tour had a putting average of over 30 putts per round. That guy's not on tour in 2022. No. So I can tell you now that you know, my putting average probably was about 32 or 32 putts a round in 2021. And I felt like I putted okay, but I know I was leaving a lot on the table. and. Yes, I've had, I had a lot of things going on in 2021. You know, had, had a newborn, got a new, new kid, job, everything like that. But that's no excuse. I want to become a better putter. And if I could just have less than 30 putts around at the National Club Pro, there's no doubt that I will finish top 20 and be playing a PJ Championship. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of like we talked earlier before the video started. Um, over the holidays, you know, had a little break and was watching some, watching some old tapes of the Masters yesterday. You know, from 1970, 52 years ago, what's the number one thing you're seeing? They're making putts. They're hitting putts the right speed. You know, Gary Player, Billy Casper, some of the best putters that were considered ever. Uh, you know, my work with, uh, with the Minnesota golf team is working about speed and working about putting better. You know, you go through the stats, you go through your stats, you know what happens. You hit the ball fine. You hit the ball far enough. We've seen your videos that the ball goes far enough. You hit it straight enough, but you got to get it in the hole faster. You know, and, and there's nothing more frustrating than, than playing around with golf with somebody and your ball striking them so much better and you shoot 70 and they shoot 68. All right. It, yeah, it happens. It happens too often. And there's a reason why I'm standing here and I'm probably not playing in more tour events, honestly. Right. And at your level, we're not talking about a lot of putts. You know, we're talking about one or two putts around. We're not talking about trying to make five or six more putts around. That's going to happen. You know, when you get it going, the greens match up, the putts match up. You're a great, great enough player that you're going to hit. You're going to you're going to have some good rounds. But what we have to do is get consistently better that if we, can, if we can take one or two less putts through the year 2022, you're going to start reaching the goals that you have for yourself. Right. So. Yeah, and I'm ready to put the work on. And just to give like a little background, in 2021, the start of the year, I was playing an arm lock putter. Right. I played that for the, kind of the last couple of years. I feel like it was, it was a very good band-aid for me when you know, I didn't really put as much time into, into, into putting and it was, it's, honestly, it's so easy to, easy to do. Yeah. Not saying that's out of the question, but I feel like if I go back to a shorter putter, I feel like I have a little bit of control and I want to put the work in to go back to a shorter putter and just trust that. Yeah. So that's, you know, the putter I've got right now, I don't know a single thing about it. The only thing I know is it's shorter than the Unlock putter. It's a standard length putter, I think it's 34 inches. I asked my rep to literally just get me a putter in my hands just to part with. So this could be anything. I putted with it okay. I didn't want to look at anything, but now's the time to go through this putter fitting. Yeah, and you know, and when you're frustrated too, it, it, it's, good to, it's good to make a change. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. Can't tell you the people that come in here that, well, I've putted with the same putter for 20 years or the same style for 20 years, and it, it, it still hasn't helped me. Well. You know, there's a lot of great putters. Odyssey makes some great putters. But we got to find the right style for you. we right. got to find the right loft. we got to find the right length, the right lie angle, and get you some confidence. Because ultimately, what is putting? It's confidence. You know, you, you probably go crazy because last year in, in Chaska Town Course Thursday League, we had low putts for two Thursdays and I won the first one with 23 putts and I won the second one with 25 putts. See, I don't think I've <laughs> ever had 25 putts in a round. I know I, sh I had 26 putts, one and I shot 62. Yeah. So it helps, it definitely brings your scores down, but uh, yeah, my ball striking is very good. I hit a lot of greens regulation. That yep. definitely affects the putting average a little bit. Right. But I know I just, I'm leaving a lot on the table and I've got to improve this. Well, and it's what we've seen in, in videos we've done before with Quintech. 
if you don't have the right loft on the putter, you're not going to create the right ball roll. And if you don't create the right ball roll, you're not going to be able to control your speed. So the number one thing we need to do for you is whatever putter we choose, loft is, is that is, that is 80% of what we need to do is get you the right loft on a putter. So I like it. Let's see what you're doing with the one that you just grabbed from the rep and we'll take it from there. Sounds good. So what I've been using uh, since probably May, June, 2021 is the Odyssey Las Vegas putter. Okay. So it's kind of like the Odyssey 7. Yep. Um, I, I kind of like the shape of it and that's why I can like ask for something like that. But I'm really open to go. I'm, I'm an open book right now. Okay. Well, like I said earlier, I mean, we really need to find out what the, the correct loft is. Uh, I measured the length, it's 34 inches. I didn't do the loft and lie yet because I wanted you to hit a couple putts first. And then we'll kind of see where that goes. You know, what happens, Thomas, and you, you know it as well, being a fitter, that once we get the loft and the length correct, then the putter kind of comes a little bit interchangeable. Then you can look for a style and we can look for whether it's face balanced or it's yep. got some toe hang, whether it's going to help you or not. You know, what I want you to become is, I want you to become, you know, kind of go back to being 16 years old again. Be able to stand over a putt, not think about it, and roll at the right speed. The more you can do that, the better putter you're going to become. The more you're going to hit the right speed. You know, the people that struggle a little bit, you get very technical. You start thinking about too many things, you know. The great advantage for me is I don't think about, honestly, I don't think about anything anymore when I play golf. It's 61 <laughs> years old. You know what? I'm out there having fun. Yeah. And it's amazing how well you can play just out there having fun. But it's also hard having played tournament golf and have played in college. You know, I know that it's hard to turn, to flip that switch to become, hey, from a fun round of golf to tournament golf. You know, that's what Bobby Jones always said. There's two types of golf. There's regular golf and there's tournament golf. So, but the better we can get the putter, the less it'll, the more it'll ease your mind that you know that you've got the right thing in your hand, your confidence level goes up, more putts go in, we win golf terms. Just like any other club in your bag, right? It's the reason why we get fit. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, let's hit a putt. And okay. Let's see what we got going with this. Anytime you're ready. Pretty good stroke there. And that one wasn't bad at all. So the launch is a little bit high. Overspin's good at 25. Side spin's great. So, you know, we've got as we've done videos before with Quintech, we always know green numbers are really good. Yep. We've got a little bit, we've got a little bit of a red number here that we're just launching a little bit too high. Okay. So let's hit another putt. Let's see what does. Then I'm gonna check the the loft on your putter and we'll figure it out. Another good stroke. And here's where that loft hurts us because now you don't make quite as good a stroke as you did on the first one. Yep. So you make a little bit. Hey, we're all human. You're not gonna do it perfectly every time. But here's what happens. Now all of a sudden that, that loft really hurts us because now we go to backspin. Side spin still stays reasonably okay, but we definitely get hurt right here. So I'm gonna go check the loft on that putter. I'm gonna take a little bit off that putter and then we're gonna we're gonna see how it goes. Okay, so I was launching it around about two and a half to three degrees, yes. essentially, right? Yeah. All right, three and a half, a little flat. Down to two. So Thomas, that putter had three and a half degrees of loft on it. Which is you know, probably pretty standard if you get Pretty standard off the rack, around right? three degrees. Yep. You know, you have a little tendency to have the ball a little bit forward in your stance. I've always, definitely <laughs> always been that way. I'm left eye dominant. Yep. I think that's why I always gravitate yeah. further and forward. And you tend to hit, so 
your miss is going to be hitting up on it a little bit. So you're actually going to add lob. You're actually not doing too bad because if the putter's got three and a half, you're still a little bit shaft positive, which is good. Yeah. But as we saw, when you make a little bit of a mistake, when there's a little bit of flip in there, it creates backspin. So if you take the first putt that had 25 RPMs of overspin, it's going to track to the hole really fast. The second putt, it's going to limp its way to the hole. You know, and out in the real world in greens, especially if they're a little bit slower, a little grainier, you're going to struggle. Might leave some short. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's see what we do with two. Okay. Okay, so immediately we go to a launch at 1.32, where we want, we want to be somewhere between one and two degrees. Yep. Our overspin goes to 53, and our side spin goes to two. Well, that's, that's interesting. It's the first putt I've seen in a long time where it wasn't so much hook spin, and actually that was a slight little bit of cut spin. It, I mean, yeah, a little two. bit of cut yeah. spin. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's okay to be a little bit cut or draw. Okay, the preferred spin is a little bit of draw. The putter works a little bit inside because it is on an angle this way. Yep. But if we're less than 10 either way, you're going to be really good. I'll give you a perfect example. Brett Quigley, who used to play the PGA Tour, plays the Champions Tour, arguably one of the best person I've ever had on a Quintech. Basically, he was at zero. One putt would have been two draw. Next putt, three cut. But it, he's hitting it so solid that his speed is great because he's, he's got it nailed down. So let's go ahead and hit another one with that, with that loft on there. And then we're going to talk about a couple other parameters on your putter. There we go. We got that one. Yeah, we definitely can see the ball turning over. And again, we launched it at 1.8, 32 RPMs of overs, and then seven draw. Yep, so, so it's within 10, which is, which is still good. So merely by changing the loft a degree and a half, we've made that putter dramatically better. Right, it's, it's in the green. It's yeah, in, it's, yeah, yeah. it's in the green, you can play with it. It's 34 inches, I like that length for you. I wouldn't change the length, because if we went any longer, Putter has a little tendency to rather working this way, it's going to want to work this way. Yeah, I would tell you now, I wouldn't want to go longer than 34. Yeah, and you know, then comes lie angle. And everybody talks about lie angle and says, well, you know, the putter needs to see flat, whatever. Well, let me tell you, having watched a bunch of old masters, <laughs> you know, Seve's putting with the toe up like this, Payne Stewart and Steve Stricker putt with the heel up, and you got everything in between. Yep. It's really about comfort. Now, if it's going to cause you to miss the hole, if it's going to cause you where you feel like you're not aligning the putter very well, then we make a lie angle change. That one's set up actually at one degree flat. It's at 69 degrees. Okay. Okay. I consider 70 to be, stan 70 to 70. be standard. No matter what the manufacturers do, I like using 70. So. It's a little bit flat. It sets up well for you. I think what we need to do is we need to take the other putters you're interested in, set it up to that, and let's see what we do with them. Yeah, I, talking on the lie angle, I will say, sometimes I do feel like I get a little bit technical. You know, I'll yeah. set, the, set the putter down. I'll try and get that thing literally flat right. as part of my pre-shot routine. Yeah. So I don't know if that you know, influences the fact sometimes that's maybe a little more toe down than anything like that. but. It seems like it's sitting in a good spot right now, is where it's Yeah, at. I mean, I went, you know, based on those last few putts with the correct, the correct loft angle on it, probably wouldn't change it right now for you. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, all I can do is screw things up <laughs> to make them worse. Yeah. So let me take, this is one of the models you liked. Yep. I'm going to go bend it to that specs, and we'll see what we get. Okay. All right. Try hot double wide. So. Yeah. Yeah, and this, this is the time of year when I get to test new stuff out, and you know, I'm looking at Odyssey putters, and I'm trying to find one that of the new stuff that's going to fit my style of putter. Right. 
Right, and this is a, a new Odyssey Tri-Hot double wide, so it, you know, it has that kind of answer Newport look to it, but it's wider. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of stability. Little bit, that's face balance. This will have a little bit of toe hang. Okay. Uh, it's at 34 inches, and it's at the same loft and lie as that putter. Yep. Let's see what we do with it. And I'll say, like, the, the putters that I've always looked at, I, I've never really gravitated to what a lot of toe hang, right. but I feel like I've always been kind of like, you know, 40 degrees to zero is kind of where my range, I feel yep. like I've always liked the, the look of or feel of, but like I said, I'm, I'm open to anything. I'm, a, I'm an open book. If you suggest more or less with regards to well, toe I'm hang. More, or, I'm more interested in, in now, you know, you've gone, we've gone to the white hot face. That has a solid, that's a milled solid face. Yep. So I'm more concerned about the feel off the putter to you than I am anything else. Okay. Because it's definitely going to feel different. It's going to feel softer. Yeah. So let's hit a couple putts with it. Let's see what uh, let's see what we get, and we'll go from there. I'm going to choke down just slightly since these are obviously 35 inches. Yeah. Okay. So right there, the loft definitely puts us in the right launch angle. Don't get as quite as much overspin. I feel like that ball came off the face a lot softer and it kind of barely got to the hole. Yeah, and, yeah. but oh, by the way, we had no side spin. Which is always good. Which is always, which <laughs> but, is, but which is always great. So, you know, what we really need to do, again, is we need to find the putter that's going to create the best launch which we know two degrees of loft is what you need. We've got to find a putter face that's going to create more overspin and become consistent. So then when you go out and practice, and we know, like you said, you had limited time to practice last year with work and family and everything going on, but we got to make your practice efficient. Yeah. Okay. If you're standing out there with the wrong loft, you're not, that's not efficient practice. Okay. I want a putter that feels good in your hands, that looks good to your eye, feels good coming off the putter face. We know we can get the specs right. Yeah, and I feel like I don't need to hit really too many more putts with this putter. It looked significantly different for me. It seemed longer this way. Right. And just feeling off the face and not seeing that ball struggle to get to the hole. Right. And you just like, felt soft. And yeah, I always it, liked a firmer feel. And we talked about earlier, you, like, you kind of like the double bend look. Yeah. You know, and that's not a dump. That's, yeah. that's, that's a plumber's neck. Yep. All right, so let's hit one more. Let's see one more of this. But you know, my first more. impression was it came off the face just a little slow. And you know what? First impressions mean a lot. I'm okay with it being long. Good stroke there. And again, you know, we have overspin, but we have more side spin, we have launch. Putter's really not fitting. Yeah, it it just didn't feel as comfortable. I think I could get used to the look. Right. But it just it was it was significantly different. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's try similar putter, but it has your double bend look to it. So this is the new Toulon Chicago. Chicago. Yep. So it's not quite as wide as that double wide was. And, but it does have the neck. It's got a little bit of toe hang, but it definitely has the shaft bend that you like. Right. So let's see what we do with this. Pretty solid putt right there. And there we go. So now launch is good, overspin's good, side spin's good. So definitely less toe hang for you helps. Okay. There's no doubt about it. Yep. Okay. So you, that would have, that other one had like 45 right. right on it. So right. stay under that. This yep. has got 30. Okay. Yeah. And there, you know, your hands are very kind of passive or quiet through your putting stroke. Yep. You know, you don't see a lot of, you know, I struggle with putters like that because I grew up putting with end shafted blades that do this. So <laughs> right. I'm used to that. I'm used to that feel. Okay. You're a little bit younger. You're a little used to more putters that are more that style. Yeah. It's just what you what you are and who you are. Yeah. I so. feel like m my 
putting technique is I try and get over the ball and I'm just kind of like rocking the shoulders is what it feels yeah. like. And once again, a pretty good putt. Not quite as much overspin as the original putter, but still acceptable level of overspin, not much side spin, pretty darn good. Yeah. So we have one good. more. We have one more to try. Right. And now this is uh, definitely a full-on more face balance putter. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this is the new Odyssey 11. Uh, they kind of looks like they kind of filled it in a little bit. And uh, it's got your it's got your shaft bend that you like. Right. Face balance. Let's see what we do with it. Yeah. As you mentioned, a little more, I guess, you know, yeah. space age well, compared this to everything is, else. But this is also going to be a good test between this face and that face. Okay. So that's got the white hot face. Yep. This has got the the solid milled face. So let's see what you let's see what you think. So that launched a little bit higher. It's still, it's at two degrees still. Okay. That launched a little higher. Good overspin, good side spin. You know, and then the question comes, somebody might say, well, they're all at two degrees. Why did it launch higher? Well, this one right here, because of the weight of the putter, the back weight, center of gravity is farther back. And we all know that when the center of gravity is farther back, it wants to chase the shaft, so it's going to add more. Right. Maybe not the best thing for you because of your tendency. Because I, I need to keep the loft down. You need to keep yeah. the loft down. So let's see. That's one putt, but we'll see what we get. When's the last time I made a putt? Okay. So I don't like this at all for you. Yeah. It, it's just two out there. Yeah, it is definitely, and I want to throw in the mix. Is that you know, it's always nice to test new stuff, and it's to us too space age for one, and I couldn't make the putt for for another. Well, and and here's the problem that people don't understand. Okay, two degrees aloft, two degrees aloft, but totally different center of gravity. You know, it's kind of it, it's the difference between having a driver that is that has weight face forward and weight back, yep. okay? It's gonna add loft if the weight's back. It's gonna decrease loft if the weight's forward. Same thing with putters. And we just proved right here that that's not good for your stroke. For other people, it might be fine, but for you, definitely not. Let's also add in too, this one's got a little thicker grip to it. And I didn't, I wasn't a fan of how thick this yeah. was there too. It just so, felt a little off. So basically the thing you walked in with is perfect. The thing I walked in with is perfect. They're now they're they're coming out with a new version of it. It's black. Yeah. You know, obviously I like the look of this as well. So yeah. which is always good good to know. Yeah. Um, so you know, between these two designs, knowing this doesn't have as much seven gravity back, got a little bit, but it's still No, it's still gonna be still it's forward. still gonna be closer to the back of the yeah. face. Yeah. No. They're both so this has got basically no toe hang on it, right? Right. And this has got a little bit. That's got a little bit of toe. Just, yeah, hand. a little bit. Okay. I would stay in that putter right now. Stay in this putter, but get the the newer. I do get like the, the I do like the black finish. Yeah, we'll get yeah. The, get the newer version of that. Okay. Yep. But and the loft, loft needs to be less two. loft on yep. it. Okay. Sixty nine on the lie, two on the loft, and thirty four inches. Okay. Yep. Okay. Want to talk about your stroke a little bit? Yes. Okay. I, I knew that. One. I knew that was coming up here. Now, you know, let's face it. You know, I probably haven't <coughs> played. I haven't played a competitive round since the beginning of October. Right. And this is we're shooting this. You know, middle of January. Um, so I haven't done a lot. Now yep. I do have a place to practice, so I'm back into you know, practice mode. I've done a little bit of practice yep. putting the last couple of evenings. Um, but what what do we got to work on? Because this is this is going to be big. Because I'm I'm committed here to. Make okay. any changes. I don't think I need to make massive changes, but I just okay. will notice I miss a lot to the right. Well, what I'm going to tell you right away is what every golfer needs. So why don't you set that golf ball up and we'll talk about it. So you're setting that golf club here in our, here in our putting bay that gets set on a silver dot. 
Yep. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to be staring at that silver dot, and we're going to listen to it go in the hole. We're not going to watch it go in the hole. I like that. Okay. So you go ahead and hit me a putt, and we're going to listen for it to go in the hole. Oh, you didn't. You peaked. I was down there for a while. You were down there for a while. <laughs> but look what happened to your overspin. That's a lot. That's a lot of overspin. That's tons of overspin. So what am I doing? Peaking and you're you're up. peaking. So what happened? I mean, Gary Player says that every golfer on putts from six feet and in should always hear them go in, should never watch them go in. Yeah. Okay. You got to remember that the putter face, the shaft, your left hand, your left arm, your shoulder, and your head are all connected. If I do this, everything goes. I mean, think about it, if you were out there hitting a seven iron into a green, you wouldn't do that, would you? No, you're no. gonna stay down and hit through it. Yeah. But everybody, because the hole's there, everybody wants to see the results. It's about the process. Uh, I'll show you a drill that I work with with the, with the gophers. So go ahead and set yourself up. We can't get the numbers because my feet are gonna be in the way of the camera. So we got the silver dot though. Still silver dot. Okay, so that, for, that felt like that took forever. <laughs> but if you try to peek, you're going to look into my hand. Yeah. So my visual for them is, hey, when you're playing a tournament round of golf, you're playing a practice round, think about my hand being there from six feet and in. Yeah. And just hit the putts. What about longer putts? Longer putts. Are they a little more feel? Longer like, putts like, are a little bit more feel, yeah. but you can't do this because you're creating more speed and you're gonna hit up on it, now you have potential to create backspin. Hit the putt, let it roll eight or 10 feet, then look up at it. Okay. Okay? Yep. That's definitely, I mean, to me, that's the biggest thing in, a, in your stroke. I mean, you set up beautifully to it, your arms look good, everything looks comfortable, but if your tendency, we know your tendency is to hit up a little bit, well, if you do it in here, what happens when you're out playing a tournament, you get a little bit of, you know, there's a little right. bit of nerve going on. Yeah. You're gonna do this even more. So the more you can practice this. I mean, Lou Graham, US Open winner from the 70s, had a drill that he would take a dime and put the, from six feet, put the dime on the ground, put the ball on top of the dime, and watch the dime until he heard the ball go in the hole. It's a great drill. A good drill. Great drill. Yep. It's 50 year old drill. <laughs> and it still yep. works. And it's still because you have to hit it squarely. There is no room for error. Think about it this way if I take a driver, oh, it's a little bit inside or a little bit, you, you can, you can kind of save it. Okay? You can't save a putt. And when you start trying to save putts, then you start adding side spin, back spin, all kinds of bad things happen. Got it. So the more you can stay solid, hit it solidly, the better off you're going to be. So what I would do is take that putter, do some practice with it for a couple weeks, and then before you go down and play in the National Club Pro, let's, let's revisit it a couple times and see where we're at. Okay. But if you do that, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be, you're going to be in great shape. Yeah. Are you worried the fact that, that there's more overspin? on that, like 101 RPMs? No, that's one of those things But in that, it's just a warning that, hey, that's a little high, maybe we need to add a little loft to it. But till you practice it for a few weeks, I'm not gonna worry about it okay. today. Because we had some putts that had backspin today. Yeah, okay. I'd, I'd much rather, I'd went much rather worry about that number being too high. Than, than not being, than nothing. None, than none okay. at all. Okay. Okay? Yeah, one more thing. Sure. Alignment. Okay. So I use the Callaway Chrome Soft golf ball yep. that has the triple track line on it. Yep. The last round of the year, I didn't use the line. I have Campbell written on my ball. So it's okay. a smaller line. Yep. Putted much better with that smaller line or non existent line right. versus when I was using the triple track. And I, I like the triple track from short range because it was, I feel like it's just one added benefit of making sure I'm lined up straight. Yep. But 
the triple track line is pretty long, and I feel like it gets a little lopsided at, at times. What, what you, what's your thoughts on you know line and making sure I get myself lined well, up part of my pre sharp routine? You know, and I, I get that question all the time. You know, I'll ask somebody, do they putt with a line on the ball? No. Should I start? No. Don't start. If you feel confident, one of the things that when you do have that line, you've got to trust that line. Okay, you can't set that line up and then stand over the putt and go, boy, that looks a little left. I'm going to adjust my stroke or adjust my putter before I make that. You're done. Yeah. You better back away off that putt. Okay, so that's the only thing that if you do use a line, whether it's one line, the three lines, whatever it is, you've got to trust. You've got to have trust because here's the thing. You also get a chance to learn from that. If say you play a practice round and you miss every putt left, okay, but you trusted that, so you know you've got to work a little bit on lining up. Maybe you're lining up everything to the left. If you don't trust that line, then we don't learn anything from having the line on there. Okay. I've never putted with a line. I mean, you know, when I started playing golf 55 years ago. <laughs> Nobody even talked about anything like that. Yeah. Okay, you'd set the ball up. I mean, I still to this day have the name of the golf ball and the number sort of pointed at the hole, but I don't really even care that much. Yeah. I pick a spot. I pick a spot a foot to two feet in front of the putt that I want to hit. Okay. If I hit that one, I'm pretty comfortable that I'm going to make this putt. Pretty good at speed. Yeah. Uh, have putted basically the same way for 55 years and but the more I've learned the more I've understood the more player the more great players that I've been around you start picking and choosing you know what works for people my opinion is like we talked earlier you got to putt like you're 16 you got to just think about the process you got to think about the speed and then you have to find what works for you in competition I like the idea of one line versus three lines. I think the three lines to me is a little busy. Yeah. Okay. I understand why they did it because they did a study and nobody lined the ball up very well. They couldn't line the ball. They couldn't line their putter. Okay. It helps out a little bit. But at the end of the day, you have to do what's right for you. I have to do what's right for me. Our cameraman has to do what's right for him. People in the store here have to do what's right for them, okay? So there's not one way to do it. Just okay. we know there's not one way to swing a golf club. So you kind of got to morph into what, and if one line just using the Campbell works the best, go for it. Yeah, I think I'm going to start with that. Yeah. I'm going to always get triple track if I, if I feel like I need it or I go away from yeah, it. Yeah, do too, you have one of those golf balls here? Yeah, so I've yeah, got let's, two let's, of them here. Yeah, let's, so I've got, so got the triple track on one side and I've got Campbell well, on the other side. Let's set one up with Campbell. You set it up in the center of the hole. Let's see what yeah. we get. And when I'm doing this with me being left eye dominant, I'm, if I'm lining something up, I'll actually close my right eye and just which try and is, use my which left eye. Which is absolutely awesome. That is one thing that definitely helps players is to know what their dominant eye is and if they're having trouble lining it up with that, quote, just line up with dominant eye. Keegan Bradley, yeah. okay, work with Lucas Glover on that. It significantly helps you line the line up if you just use your dominant eye. I like to call it the pirate, give it the pirate. <laughs> Okay. Trust me, I've tried both eyes. <laughs> so let's see. So I take a look at that. To me, that looks like it's dead center in the hole. Okay, that's good. Okay, not bad. Let's try that I was, I was I was waiting for the sound, but I never, never heard the ball drop. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. But you also have to remember, too, we've got a little bit of... We've got a little bit of scar tissue. If, I, if I'm looking at your stroke, Thomas, I'd like you to feel like the putter finishes 
a little bit lower and a little bit less. Okay. So I, I mean, my old stroke would be just leave that face. Your old stroke is kind of way. up yeah. and push. Up and so push. So you yeah. almost need to feel like you're going to put a little bit of draw spin on a putt. My uh, my swing thought 2021 was just to drop the right foot back just a touch to try and feel like I can get that thing to release a little yeah. bit more. Well, and you know what? It's amazing how golf swing and putting stroke match up so well. <laughs> Beautiful there. Felt so, good. So yep. well, but now the putter stays on line where you've been kind of holding impact. You get the putter head to release a little bit. You know, everybody gets a little fearful when they when we talk about release. Now you're left your left hand low, but if you look at the left hand low putters, you know that toe has to close a little bit. Because think about it this way: if I take it back. Because it's on an arc, it's going to open a little bit. You don't open it as much as I do. Yeah. I open the toe of the putter much <laughs> more than you do. Okay. But it's got to finish this way. It can't, you can't take it here and finish that way. It's impossible to go straight back and straight through is what you're saying, right? It's There's going to be a little bit of an arc. The only way you can go straight back, straight through is what Bryson's trying to do, which is take an arm lock putter at 80 degrees of lie angle, put it up on the toe, and try to create this. I mean, if you look at Bernhard Langer, that's what he tries to do with his long putter, is to get to this where it's truly straight back and straight through. There's gonna be a little bit of an arc. So you have to allow that to release a little bit. You know, one of the things that I would, I would say for you to practice when you're at home is exaggerate it, okay? Yeah. I mean, you got, you got feel, you got touch. You know that, okay, well that's, now I've pulled a couple left, that's too much. Then you can find that happy medium between where you were before, too much here, then you'll know that feel of just a gentle release of the toe like you did on that putt. Yeah, that last one felt really good. Yeah. I did, I did like it, I hit one more. Well, staying down, Listening for it to go in the hole is going to help you dramatically release the putter, okay? One of the things that, that I work with students, go ahead, set yourself up. Okay. Low and left. That's a different feel for you because you have a tendency to get a little bit of yeah. chicken wingy. And I think that's why I like arm lock, because I could just be locked in there. But Absolutely. Yeah. But arm lock is a little bit less, in my opinion, it's a, it's a little bit less, it's more mechanical. It's yeah. less feel. Okay? If somebody really is struggling with the putter and really, you know, you went to it for the right reason. But what you found is it's good, but it's not going to be the ultimate for you. Yeah. Okay. Rocco Mediate, who comes in all the time here, is gone to arm lock. Well, Rocco has a tendency, he just rips it inside. He's yeah. ripped, I've known him for 35 <laughs> years. He's ripped the putter inside for 35 years. That's why he went, that's why he went to long putting, because it helped him not take it away, but he doesn't want a long putt anymore. And that's why he's gone to arm lock to fix his backstroke. Okay. You don't have that problem. You just have a little, a little finish issue where it's kind of up and out of it a little bit. Yeah. No, that last stroke felt really good. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, listening for it, it does feel like the ball was taking forever to get the hole because I'm used to looking and wanting to see where it, where it's it is. Hard. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It feels like I could count for five seconds and yep. still not hear it. But yep. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely, that's going to be a, a change. But I mean, one thing I have noticed is my head does like to kind of move around a little bit. But I think that's also going to help. With that too. Yeah, it'll it'll quiet it down. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of head movement. Your original putts, your head, if anything, your head tends to want to work back a little bit. Yeah. And that's why the putter works up so much. You know, if you look at Crenshaw and Faxon, their heads actually move a little forward. Okay. Well, if you're gonna move in one direction, I'd rather have your head move forward in a putt. Then move this way. Yeah. Because all when it moves back, all it does is add more loft. Up, add loft, and keep Push. the face open. Yeah. 
Okay, it's a push. Okay. And then after you push a couple putts, what do you do? Then change you, a stroke. Yeah, change your stroke, give yeah. it a couple flips, and now you've, you know, now you've got 32 putts instead of 28 putts, or right. 30 putts. Yeah. You know, I don't see any reason why, with what we did here today, a little bit of practice, a little recheck, that we can't get under 30 putts average for next year. I, I hope so, because I, I'm done having averaging 32, 33 putts around. It's, it's been brutal. Well, it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. it, you know, and that's the, that's the bottom line. You know, the better you hit it, frustrating, it, it gets very frustrating. And with as good as you hit it, you don't have to be a great putter. You just have to be a good putter. Right, all I'm asking is 30. I'm not, I'm yeah. asking for 27 or 28. No, like, you, don't have, you don't have to be a great yeah. putter. You can be a good putter. So I think, yeah. this, uh, I think this video is really good to help a lot of people. It's gonna help you a lot and uh, I hope I could help you. Yeah, it's gonna be great to have it as a memory bank too because I always come back and come back to this video now if I'm working on something and always realize, oh, that's what I need to work on. So. Absolutely. Larry, this was great. I really appreciate your help here and I look forward to seeing you here in a couple of months. Sounds good.